Hi everyone, Materum here with the second part of my Saurian Ancients uh, army review. This video is going to focus on the magic that the Saurian Ancients can take um, and kind of discuss my thoughts on those particular schools and um, really how they play into what I see as the strengths of the Saurian Ancients army and kind of just give my thoughts regarding that. Now, the Saurian Ancients are pretty awesome in that they actually have access to six different schools of magic. Um, with the Quad Lord, you can get Alchemy, Divination, Evocation, and Pyromancy. And with the Skink Priests, you can take Druidism and Shamanism. So um, we've got a lot to go through. Um, and again, the, the visuals of this video are just uh, models from my Sauron Ancients army that I've painted, so you don't have to really pay a whole lot of attention if you want to listen to this while painting and that sort of thing. That's really what this, this kind of video is for. So um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first school that we're going to talk about is the School of Alchemy. I would certainly say this is a very uh, popular school at the moment um, and it's not hard to see why it's got a lot of synergy with things outside of the list and we'll talk about that a little bit um so the attribute spell for Al uh, is alchemical fire 18 inch hex lasts a turn target gains flammable against close combat attacks and spells um this is really strangely enough what i see is the key of how effective that this the alchemy can be in a um, close combat style army um, mainly because the flaming banner is cheap so you throw the flaming banner on a big brick of Soros warriors or something and uh, you get a lot of attacks that have rerolls with the flammable so that's that's pretty awesome um, the zero spell is quicksilver lash um, eight up to cast 24 inch range uh, hex missile damage instant target suffers d3 plus one hits with metal shifting um it's not a bad zero level spell i mean depending it's it's very matchup dependent if you're playing against an army without much armor you're not going to get much out of it um but it's good to kind of chew up some knights um then you got word of iron which is either six to cast or nine to cast uh, 24 inch range augment last one turn the target gains plus one or plus two to its armor save depending upon how you cast it um, additional armor never hurts it's a, it's a good solid spell uh, molten copper is seven or ten to cast 24 inch range hex missile damage instant uh, target suffers 2d6 or 3d6 strength two hits with armor piercing three and flaming attacks um, again who doesn't love a good magic missile uh, with armor piercing three you get rid of the armor on pretty much anything other than like your big heavy hitter cavalry guys so two or three d6 worth of hits it is pretty awesome um, and then of course you essentially hit that then follow it up with the alchemical fire to start making folks uh, flammable or if they've already been made flammable then you get rerolls on all those strength two hits so there's a lot of synergy within this lore i think it's it's very well designed in my opinion because of that uh then you got your silver spike it's seven or ten to cast seven it's 18 inch range 10 it's 36 inch range it's another magic missile uh the target suffers one hit at strength three with six in parentheses uh armor piercing six multiple wounds d3 penetrating it basically is a magical bolt thrower um it's just good <laughs> um but this is this is probably in my opinion one of the weaker spells in this particular lore uh then you got corruption of 10 8 plus will get you 24 inch range 11 plus will get you 48 it's a hex but this is what makes this great it's a permanent hex and the target suffers minus one to its armor save um this spell is awesome uh, I, I love uh, particularly if with the kind of build that I use where it's a lot of spearmen so I'm already getting strength for armor pierce one and then you just lower the armor by one or two 
you can take away a, pretty much all the armor that your opponent has. And uh, because it's permanent, you don't have to keep casting it. You, you just throw and go. Uh, five is transmutation to lead. Uh, nine plus is 24 inch. Uh, 12 plus is 48. This is a hex that lasts one's turn. And the target cannot receive strength bonuses from its close combat weapons. And shooting weapons wielded by the target are minus one strength. Um, this is pretty good. <laughs> um, doesn't affect any special rules, so no, no big deal there. Um, but it's nice to, to be able to throw it on some of your shooting enemies um, to help protect some of your, your weaker things, particularly the skinks, I think. Um, and it's good to like throw it on that great weapon unit that you're about to charge and just completely rock the world of. So uh, certainly good points there. Uh, six is Glory of Gold, 10 up to cast, 18 inch range, augment lasts a turn, target gains magical attacks, flaming attacks, and armor piercing one. And again, keyed with alchemical fire, it's just good and it's very, very synergistic. Um, my general thoughts on alchemy is it's a very solid lore. Um, it plays with itself very well. <laughs> I probably have a better way of phrasing that, but... Um, and I don't really see that it has any huge weaknesses. Um, if I had to pick, probably my least favorite spell is probably Silver Spike. Um, but even that, it's a solid spell. Um, so very good all around. Uh, I definitely see this as being a very good lore to use with a close combat heavy uh, army when you put in the flaming standard and, and kind of take advantage of that. Um, but definitely I would say, I would say this is a solid A, A lore. Okay, second lore that the Quaddle gets access to is Divination. Um, now the, the benefit of the lore here is that spells from Divination gain plus three range for other wizards with non-bound spells from Divination within 12 inches. Um, the great thing about with the Quaddle is that all skinks count as essentially giving you the bonus for this, which is pretty awesome. Um, so it definitely helps some of the lower spell ranges here. Um, but the attribute is Guiding Light, basically gives the bonus of our Cold-Blooded, um, which is probably less helpful to Saurian Ancients than it is to other armies, but you can't really scoff at rolling 4d6 and removing the two highest for leadership checks either so um the zero level spell is scrying seven plus with 18 inches uh 10 plus gives you a six inch aura which gives a distracting and large target lasts a turn um very solid um can help counteract some of the the weapon skill problems that the saurus have uh so that is is certainly a good thing uh, next spell is Fate's Judgment, 7 or 10 to cast, 18 inch range, magic missile, the su target suffers either D3 or D6 hits that wound automatically with no ward or regen saves allowed. Again, kind of a situational magic missile, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good with highly armored folks, um, but against trolls, minotaurs... Um, any a number of other things, it's, it's going to be very useful. Um, <clears throat> know Thy Enemy, 8 up to cast, gets you 18 inch range. 12 up, gets you a 6 inch aura. Plus 2 weapon skill, plus 2 initiative. This spell was pretty much made for the, the lizard men. Um, plus 2 to both of those stats will certainly help deal with some of our big weaknesses, the slowness and the, the low weapon skill. I mean, obviously it's not going to help you against elves and the like, but... Um, definitely can change some some fortunes against human armies, dwarves, stuff like that. Uh, three of the stars align. Nine plus gets you an 18 inch. Twelve plus gets you a six up aura. Last one turn, target gains divine attacks and must reroll failed to hit rolls in close combat. Um, and shooting attacks if you use the lower the lower option, um, which is interesting that the lower option is better than the big one, but. I think it's balanced out by the six inch aura on the big version. Um, 
Again, certainly another way to help with the generally low weapon skill of our combat units. So again, kind of custom made for, for Saurian Ancients there, I think. Um, look to the west, 9 plus, get you 18 inch cast to give Stubborn and Immune to Psych. Um, this is probably, for, for the Saurian Ancients, probably the weakest of the spells in this lore. Just because our special leadership role rules, plus the benefit of Guiding Light, um, really kind of do this job without necessarily having to take on the negatives of being immune to psychology. Just my opinion, though. Uh, unerring Strikes, our other magic missile, 9 up to cast, or 13 up to cast. Uh, at 9 up, you get 2d6 uh, hits that wound on 4 up, have armor pierce 2 and divine attacks. At 13 up, you get 3d6. Um, it's a good magic missile. Uh, definitely one of those that you could take advantage of the telepathic link on um, if your quaddle is, is off in combat with his unit or, or what have you. So uh, definitely useful. Um, and six, Portent of Doom. Um, I don't like this spell in part because it hurt me so bad at Brawlers, but uh, I, I get it. Uh, Ten up to cast, 18 inch range hex, lasts a turn. At the start of each phase, you basically roll a d6 plus one d an additional d6 for every character in the unit. And for each six that's rolled, or uh, if any sixes are rolled, um, part of that phase is, is inaccessible to that unit. So... Uh, it prevents you from declaring charges, or march moving, or casting spells, or shooting, as the case may be. Um, I can definitely see it being helpful against uh, Death Stars, and it certainly was against my dwarves at, at Brawlers. Um, but in general, unless somebody's kind of playing a, that specific kind of list, it's not really a great spell, in my opinion. Uh, all in all, I think Divination solves a lot of the problems the Saurus have. Um... Though I would argue it has less good spells than alchemy does. Uh, I don't really like Look to the West for the Saurus or the Saurians. I don't really like Portent of Doom. Um, and I mean, scrying is can be hit or miss. But uh, I definitely think the other spells are good enough to, to make it a good choice. And it certainly does appear to be a very popular choice. A lot of folks I see are taking it. Um, and going, I don't want to say like the old light council style build, but you, you throw in some, some cheaper casters to get that, uh, range buff up and it certainly helps. The other big benefit is it's got a lot of spells with auras in it. So if you are playing kind of a densely packed, um, close combat list, you can get more mileage out of each spell. All right, next we have uh, Evocation. Uh, traits, uh, Evocation does not have a zero level spell, nor does it have any uh, basic effects. So that's kind of a downside to it. Um, the trait spell for it is Evocation of Souls. What it gives to the Saurus is on a five up 18 inch range, on an eight up six inch aura, on an 11 up 12 inch aura, um, that gives the target fear and all enemy units within six of the target suffer minus one leadership. Um, I think that's solid. Um, basically, w between fear and that, that's minus two leadership to stuff you're engaged in. Um, can really make even stubborn units uh, hurt. I mean, dropping two points of leadership is not uh, something to scoff at. So I, I actually really like this. Uh, Spectral Blades goes to probably the craziest jump I've seen. Um, five up to cast for 18 inch range to get the target re-rolling failed to wound rolls in close combat. At a 19 up, uh, same range, they also get lethal strike. Um, it's good. I have personally never used the enhanced version because 19 is just too risky a number to hit in my opinion. Um, but... Rerolling failed to wounds is never a bad thing. I, I'll throw that on my big brick of, of Sora Spearman all day long and be super happy about it. Uh, next is the Dance Macabre. Uh, six up for 12 inch or 11 up for a 12 inch aura. Gives your units an 8 inch magical move during which they're ethereal. Um, super good and can help the fact that the Saurus blocks tend to be slow. Um, unless you're, you're spending the jaguar upgrade or 
uh, the banner to speed them up. You're moving eight inches, so this is basically a free march move. Can't really uh, say anything terrible about that. Um, Ancestral Aid, seven to cast, gets you a 12-inch range, uh, and the target rerolls fails to hit rolls in close combat. At nine up, same range, but you also get shooting rerolls. Um, super good. Um, reroll to hit is very, very powerful. Uh, and with the number of poison stuff that the Saurians bring, the opportunity to reroll your shooting to hits and get another try for those poison is is very, very good. Um, Touch of the Reaper. This is 7 up to cast at 12 inch range. Um, and the target suffers D3 hits with strength 10 and armor piercing 6. Uh, when rolling to wound with this attack, you substitute the target's toughness for its leadership. Um, I don't really like... I mean, focused it means that you can snipe people out of it. Uh, I believe, unless I'm super wrong, and if I am, I should probably check that before I, I say something dumb. Okay, I have checked, and uh, that is correct. So this is a, a snipe spell... Uh, and that's mainly the reason I don't like it. I don't really find snipe spells to be hugely fun to play against. Um, it's a decent spell for what you do. Um, and I guess in, in a tournament setting where I would theoretically be playing more to win than I normally do in, in my home games, uh, I might get some use out of it. But uh, it's it's not a terrible magic missile, I guess. Uh, then we go to Whispers of the Veil, 9 to cast, 24-inch uh, range hex that remains in play, minus, two, minus 1 leadership, minus 2 weapon skill. Um, this is awesome because it builds on to the sort of fear negating, or uh, leadership negating thing that you get with the trait spell. Um, it also is going to lower the weapon skill, which can help even the odds with uh, the Saurus, uh, the Saurus who tend to have naturally low leadership, or low weapon skill anyway. Uh, then Hasten the Hour is a 6 up to cast, or sorry, the 6 spell. It's 12 up to cast, 18 inch range magic missile. Uh, you choose up to three different models in the target unit, which may be characters or champions. Each of them suffers one hit that automatically wounds with armor pierce 6. I don't like this spell. <laughs> I don't think it's very good. Um, yeah, a, a hit that, I mean, killing champions can certainly help. Uh, doing a wound or two here to characters isn't bad either, but I, I think the, the casting cost is a little higher than I would want to risk regularly, so you're really not going to try, not going to be getting this off very often. Um, also, the range is kind of short, 18 inches. You've got to be pretty close to the unit you want to screw up there, um, which means you open yourself up to potential counterattacks. Um... And again, it comes back to the, the sniping thing. I don't really much like sniping spells, but that's a, a personal thing. Uh, but I would definitely say, factoring in everything, Hasten the Hour is probably the weakest spell in the lore. Um, so overall thoughts on Evocation. I certainly like it. There are lots of bonuses that the, the lore can use for a close combat army. Um, I like the lowering leadership thing. Uh, it basically means you got to win by less to, to run a good risk of breaking folks. Um, but it's got one just bad spell in Hasten the Hour and one questionable spell in Touch of the Reaper. Um, so, like, I think if I were going to use Evocation, I would probably use the Slon Discipline, or the Quaddle Discipline that lets me get another spell just so I can increase the chance of trying to get the spells that I would want there. Okay, last of the Quaddle lores is Pyromancy. I would probably say Pyromancy is the most uh, beloved spell lore at the moment. Um, I certainly see it around more than any others. Um, it's also the one that if, if I had to argue, I don't think the Sora should have. Um, the, the, the Saurians just, I don't know. I, I never, and, and maybe the fluff will will come out and totally contradict this, though I hate having to make that statement because if it would, we should have it in our hands already. 
Um, I just don't see the Saurians as, as pyromancy people. Uh, I would rather see them have access to thaumaturgy. Um, that's just me. Um, I just, I, it's, it's a great lore. Don't get me wrong. I just don't, I personally don't feel like it fits. I've used it a lot just because it is very, very good. Um, but it bothers me on that level. Uh, but let's get into it. Um, uh, attribute spell is fireball, 24 inch range. Magic missile does D3 strength four hits. Awesome. Nothing else really needs to be said about that. <laughs> uh, pyroclastic flow, five up is 36 inch range, nine ups 24, 12 up is 12, and the target suffers D6, 2D6, 3D6 strength. So the idea is, is the higher you go for, the range gets shorter, but the amount of hits get more, and it's strength four flaming attacks. Um, very solid magic missile. You can burn a lot of chaff down, and at the 3d6 you can start doing some hurt, though you've got to be pretty close to make that happen. Which, now that I'm looking at that, I don't know that we've actually been playing that right in the home games, but that gives me something else to look at. All right, so Cascading Fire, uh, 6 plus for a 24 inch uh, augment that remains in play. At initial step zero of each round of combat involving the target, all enemy models in base contact suffer strength four flaming. Uh, at a ten up, that hits as or a six. So if you can, if you're playing a tight group, and you can get that off and and get into multiple fights, uh, or a, a single fight with multiple units that have this, that can do a lot of damage. Um, so it's it's pretty solid, and I like remains in play spells. Scorching Salvo is arguably the most broken spell in the game, just because. It doesn't really have limits. It's a 24-inch aura that doesn't care about where things are, what they're hiding behind, um, and it's either a 7 to 10 to cast to do a D3 or a D6 strength 4 flaming hits. Um, so you can't really hide from it. 24-inch aura is a lot of board space, and I mean, it's it's good. It's just, it's way good. Um, particularly because it can weaken a lot of stuff. If you're playing like I, I play and, and play with a little bit larger bricks, it helps negate a lot of that chaff issue. You can just nuke them all at once and uh, weaken them up pretty good. And, and what little shooting you have may take care of the rest. Uh, Immolation is eight up to cast, 18 inch. It's a ground spell that remains in play. Uh, you place a three inch diameter marker with its center on the selected target point and at least an inch away from all units. At the end of each phase, any unit that's been in contact with the marker during the phase suffers an area attack four, strength four flaming. Um, no unit can be affected more than once a turn. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I actually really like this because it's the, the kind of one of the few spells in the lore that gives you something other than just shoot blast blast to do. Uh, and that kind of board control can be very helpful. It can, can really change your opponent's approach and can protect things that you want to protect. Um, so I'm, I'm all about that one. Uh, five is Flaming Swords. 10 up gets you an 18 inch range. 13 up gets you a six, up, uh, six inch aura. Lasts a turn. Uh, targets close combat and shooting attacks get plus one to wound, magic attacks, and flaming attacks. Love buffs, love aura buffs even better. Uh, additional hit pluses to wound is not bad. Uh, and then 6 up is Enveloping Embers, 12 up to cast for a 24 inch hex direct damage spell. Each model in the target unit suffers a strength 3 hit with flaming attacks. Um, really awesome at, at dealing with tar pit units. So, um, all in all, the lore is solid. There's a reason why everybody is playing with it. It is just flat good. Um... <laughs> If I were to argue the point of which lore is more powerful of the four the Quaddle can take, I would probably argue Pyromancy. Uh, however, if you are going to put your uh, Quaddle Lord in a Temple Guard unit, you are going to need something with Telepathic Link. In the event they get into combat, a lot of these missile spells become useless to you. Um, but being able to use the Telepathic Link rule to get around it certainly keeps them majorly effective. Um... I would probably say effectiveness next would be alchemy 
with uh, Divination and Evocation kind of fighting for that third slot. Uh, though, I will say, I don't think the Quad will get access to a bad lore. Um, I really don't. Uh, all of the lures are solid, and for what you're going to want the Quaddle to do, they, they can pack a lot of power. And depending upon how you want to play it, you can get different play styles out of it. Um, for Pyromancy, I would probably put that in a more shooty army. Um, certainly the Alchemy, while it has those shooting aspects, I think the Synergy builds best for close combat armies. Uh, as are Evocation and Divination, all kind of a close combat build. So uh, let's talk about the Skink Priests now. So Skink Priests, uh, as I said in the other video, they're going to be your support mages. They can only be apprentices, uh, only have up to three spells, but the lords they get are pretty solid. Um, the first lore is Druidism. Um, the attribute spell on that lets you recover or raise one wound depending upon whether or not you have the trait spell up. 12-inch uh, range isn't bad for that. Though short range is going to be one of the side effects of Druidism as we'll talk about. Uh, Oaken Throne is 4 up to cast. Is a remains in play that enchants the caster which gives them augmented versions of their spells and lowers the cast of all of the, the casting number of all the spells by one. So very good. Um, the downside is this takes up a spell and it takes up dice. Um, so unless you're getting a lot of dice, if your opponent keeps dispelling it on their turn, which they should because it's a four up to dispel, um, it basically just penalizes you in dice every turn. So that's a potential weakness. Um, plus side is it only takes four to cast. So you could reasonably get it on a die or two. Uh, Master of Earth, 6 up or 5 up to cast, 18 inch range, hex direct damage. Uh, the nice thing about this one is the range can be measured from the caster or any impassable terrain feature on the table. Target suffers d6, either 4 or 5 strength hits. Um, it's alright. I probably think so far of all of the missiles we've talked about, this is probably the weakest one. Um, just because you're limited in your number of, of hits, it's just not going to have the impact of some of the others. Uh, Healing Waters um, is 8 up to cast, 7 up with the throne. 12 inch augment that gives regeneration 5 plus or regeneration 4 plus. Uh, its range trick is it can be cast from the caster or any water feature on the table. Um, this is better for the Saurus, in my opinion, than some other armies because of the number of uh, Water Strider units we have. Everything that's skink-oriented has that, so we're not necessarily as afraid of water as some of the other armies might be. And regeneration is never bad. Um, Entwining Roots, 8 up or 7 up to cast, 12 inch hex. Uh, this can be cast from the caster or a forest. Target suffers minus one or minus two weapon skill and ballistic skill. Um, it's good. Uh, it, it certainly can help balance out some of the weapon skill issues that the, Saurus, the Saurian Ancients have. Though, I think it's considerably worse than any of the other lords we've talked about that have something that do, does the same. Um, I, I don't like... I, I would rather buff my own units than penalize my enemy's units. Um, and the, the short range can be a problem, uh, for a skink caster to get into and stay alive. Um, next spell is Spirit of the Woods, 9 or 8 to cast, uh, 12 inch augment, uh, becomes universal, uh, uh, with the throne up, lasts a turn, all models in the target unit are considered to be within the forest, and if it's the augmented version from the throne, if the target's a friendly unit, they also get Strider Forest. Um... Maybe I'm just not using this spell to its tactical summit, um, but I don't really like it. I don't think... I mean, yeah, the plus one to be shot at can be okay. Um, playing tricks with some of the, uh, the light troops being stubborn in it, again, okay. But... <clears throat> I just don't think it's great. Um, the 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 12 inch range is is awful, and there's no way to to pump it or to cast it from somewhere else like the other spells. 
And for what it does, I just think the casting cost is too high. Um, then we get on to the two amazing spells in the lore. Uh, Stone Skin, 10 up to cast or 9 up, 12 inch augment, or it could be cast from a hill. Uh, target gains plus 2 or plus 3 toughness. This lore, is, or this spell is awesome. <laughs> um, a plus 2 or a plus 3 toughness at the right time can just absolutely ruin a, a combat for your opponent, and I, I think it's great. I mean, on, on our Saurus Warriors, that brings their sh toughness. Uh, if you cast it enhanced up to seven, um, the monsters would bring it up to nine in some cases. It's it's just good. Uh, then six is summer growth, either 11 or 10 to cast, 24 inch augment, and it raises models based on the size. Um, keeping your guys alive or bringing them back once they've been dead is just flat good. Um, arguably, summer growth is probably the best spell in the lore. Um, all in all... Druidism is solid. It's actually the lore I take when I take um, the skink chiefs or the skink priests. Um, it's got a lot of good tools, but with a bad roll, since you're only getting three spells, uh, you could basically get stuck with Master of Earth and Twining Roots and Spirit of the Wood. And at that point, you might not, you might as well not have brought a wizard because um, that's just those three spells just aren't good enough to be worth the points in my opinion. Um, so I can see why some folks consider this kind of a hit or miss lore. Um, I like it, <coughs> but I think it comes down to a personal taste kind of thing. All right, so the last lore that the Saurians get access to is shamanism. Uh, this is another one that is, is very popular. I've used it a few times. Um, so I can see why folks like it. Um, strangely enough, it's also one of those that I don't... I don't much like from a fluff point of view. A and again, this is just kind of speaking from my personal line of thinking. I see this as too savage for... And it's, this is kind of silly, but it, I, I see it as too savage for the Saurus. Or for the Saurians. Um, and I understand, like, the, the Skinks are obviously less evolved than the Quaddles and, and that sort of thing. So I can get it. Um, but I'm not 100% happy with it. Either way. So, um, attribute spell on this is Scarification. Uh, close combat attacks against the target cannot wound on better than 5 up. Um, eh. For, for what we have that's able to cast this, it's not great um, unless you're using it through the Stygiosaur because it gets access to these spells too. And having the Stygiosaur not be able to wound on anything better than 5-up is, is pretty good, actually. Um, the 0 spell is Awaken the Beast. 6-up or 8-up to cast gives the target unit uh, plus 1 strength or toughness if you did the upgrade. And 18 inch range on both um as good as strength and toughness are i mean it's a good spell just just hands down good swarm of insects is five up at 24 inch range or eight up at 48 inch range um it, it's a permanent spell sort of uh, we'll talk about that it's a magic missile uh 5d6 strength one hits which is okay um, if one or more unsaved wounds are hit, the target gets a minus one ballistic skill that's permanent unless they move, which is good for like hitting war machines, but I'm not a huge fan of it myself. I, I don't use it very often. Um, Savage Fury, uh, five up gets you six inches, nine up gets you 18, uh, is a universal spell that gives a target frenzy. Um... This can be good to get you some extra attacks when you need it. It also can be good if you throw it on an opponent's unit to essentially force an overrun into a situation that can, uh, can, can cause some problems. I certainly think there is a lot of potential for good tactical use of this spell, so I really like it. And making it universal gives you options in how to use it. Uh, three is Pounding Drumbeat. Uh, five plus gets you 18 inches, nine up 
gets you 12 inch aura target performs a 2d6 magical move straight forward um and if you more than one unit is effective you roll distance and move the unit before rolling the next unit uh i think this spell sucks um <laughs> It's just flat not as good as the Dance Macabre, in my opinion. And I don't like it. Um, it's, it's kind of a waste in the lore, I think. Uh, next spell is Chilling Howl. Six up to cast at 18 inch range. Or nine up at a 12 inch aura. Lasts a turn. All to wound rolls against the target from shooting attacks suffer a minus one modifier. Um, it's alright. Um... I don't know what it would really protect. Um, our, our larger monsters are already going to be wounded, being wounded on sixes from most shooting. Um, maybe protect something from a cannon, but even that isn't great. Um, it's, it's kind of a weak spell, in my opinion. Not as, not as bad as Pounding Drumbeat, but pretty close. Um, five is Break the Spirit. Nine, inch, or nine to cast, get you 18 inches. Twelve to cast, get you 36 Last a turn, Hex, uh, the target suffers a minus one modifier to hit and treats all terrain, including open terrain, as dangerous terrain too. Uh, this spell is good. <laughs> um, dangerous terrain is can, can swing things a lot of ways. Um, and it's another one of those spells that requires some, some thinking of, of when and where you want to use it uh, to get the maximum effect on it. And it can and help control... You can either use it to help defend yourself um in close combat or you can use it to dissuade your opponent from making charges um and then number six totemic summons uh both are 96 inch range at 11 up you get to drop a totemic beast within an inch of a board edge uh at 14 plus you get to drop it within 10 inches of the board edge and it's good i mean 3d6 random movement strength five toughness five uh, three initiative, four attacks, uh, breath weapon strength, three immune to psych, random movement, 3d6, and it's a 40 by 40 monstrous beast. Um, it's good. Uh, just being able to crap these guys out and have them be worth no points can cause all sorts of havoc for your opponent. Um, I don't know that I would say, as I've heard some say, that it's a broken spell, uh, but it is certainly... Arguably one of the strongest spells in this lore. Uh, all in all, I prefer, for, for a skink, I prefer druidism to shamanism. Um, but it's not by much. Uh, I, I think you have less terrible spells in shamanism, uh, but the good spells in shamanism aren't as good as the good spells in druidism, in my opinion. And then, to, if I'm honest, the the little complaint I have about shamanism not being part of the, the Saurians uh, is probably enough to make me not go that way. So, um, all in all, those are my thoughts on the lores and how they relate to the Saurian Ancients. Um, I have actually played with all of these lores, except Divination. I don't think I've given Divination... A run, and I think the one game I played of Evocation was very short. So keep that in mind. I have more experience with some of these lures than the others. Uh, I do have a list that I'm going to try out for, for practice soon, I hope, uh, if I can ever get back to playing again, <laughs> um, that's going to work off of Evocation and see how I like that. Um, but at this point, I'm not sure which lore I should lean to. Um, I'm not 100% sure I'm even going to bring magic. Um, I'm just, I'm not yet. Uh, but if I am going to bring a Quadal Lord, I'm leaning towards either Evocation or Alchemy, probably. Um, if I don't and I bring Skinks instead, I'm probably going to go with Druidism. So if you feel differently and think that I'm missing something, certainly leave those notes to that effect in the comments section. Um, I would like to hear everybody's opinions on kind of what they think of my choices uh, or just my general thoughts on the matter at all. So hope you guys enjoy that. Um, please like and subscribe or like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you are of a mind, uh, go to my Patreon, which will be down in the, the 
description and uh, become a patron. Uh, definitely love having folks support me. I, I thank those who have already done so. And I hope you guys just keep enjoying what I'm doing. So thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.